at halftime in Croke Park in this summer's second senior hurling semi final. Tipperary leading Kilkenny one goal and ten points to one goal and nine. And Cyril Farr, Joe Lachnan, Tomás McCahey here with me in studio. Uh, Joe, we, we expect and ask so much of this, these games the last couple of years between these two sides. They don't disappoint. Oh my God, look at the start of that game. I haven't seen a start like that since the 1998 replay between Clare and Waterford below Thomas. Should, the we should have told people not to sit too close uh, to the telly. Oh, exactly, put your helmet on watching it on television because... The, the early exchanges, both physical and verbal, were absolutely ferocious, you know, and the, 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 intense, the pace of the game after that, it just never, it, it was relentless, it just never gave up. And all the pre-match analysis about who were going to be the stars all went out the window, because they're like Alar and Henry Shefflin, Tommy Welch were all out of the game. Mm -hmm. But it was played, in, like, you know, the danger is that someone will analyse this in a video and start blaming people for what went on and see who hit who. That's rubbish. Those things happen at the start of the game, there's no one injured, hard physical changes in the game has settled down. Now Kilkenny grabbed the initiative after that. They did the better holding, they were more incisive in the forwards, with the real, the real important part here I think. I know, the, the, you know, you see all those kind of uh, exchanges early on in the game. The really important thing here is Tipperary, since they got the goal, that mm -hmm. pair bought goal, ten in, in, from the 26 minute on, they've outscored Kilkenny by 1-3 to no score. Yeah. So now Tipperary are going in, having grabbed the initiative, the question is, can they hold it? Or will Kilkenny come out and respond to that now? Now, they were watching all those exchanges, shouldering and messing and shoving around. But I, I, like, I, I think the referee was right at that stage. Was, because, I was. mean, if he was going to flash yellow cards all over, we'd have had yeah. no teams, right? I mean, at times you would say the referee, Colin Mc, McAllister, he's from Cork. He's known for not blowing the whistle. You'd wonder, was there a P at all in the whistle? Because at times, he just let the, 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 the play go. And look, so, it has made for the first half, to be fair. But while I agree with you, and I yes. love what's happening, you have to say, where are the rule books? Like, mm. you go to a minor match, Joe, you'll be caught ah, this. Sir, I know sir, which sir, 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 Hold on, hold on, I mean, it's a man. It's, it's a man. 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 You can't have a rule book. What is he going to do in the first half? Troy, slap your other cards. Wait a second. Wait a second, now, Tomas. You can't have a rule book. One rule for a championship hurling, and you have another rule for the first round. I don't mind, but I'm just saying to you. What rules did he break? I agree with you. I'm just saying to you, Tomas. You can't have it everywhere. What rules did he break? I agree with both of you. Both. I looked out here and I hmm. counted five rows in five yeah, different areas various. going on at the that's same that's time. Point. So how could you possibly just pick out somebody and send yeah, them on after yeah, that? Yeah. Uh, that happens. That I mean, it, I this is the fourth meeting. It was always going to be that we were all going to have a kind of a conflagration. To start I think it would have been, it would have been, been a problem had, if it continued. Yeah. If it continued. Yeah. They all got to know each yes. other. They carried yeah. on yeah. 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 He flashed the first yellow card to Tommy Walsh and it seemed to die straight away then after that because they knew anybody else that was going to break the line. But the point I'm making is this. That the refs, and I'm not blaming that ref, like, because as you said, you, you could sit off 10. They're doing their own rules. Like, they're being assessed all year. Now, how do you assess that? I'm just saying to you, if that was first round championship, you know, well, there'd be two, there'd be at least two rules sit down. We'll assess it for the GA. It was great. Yes. Back <laughs> yeah, 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 let's, yeah. let's look at the Kilkenny goal, Jerry, because this put a gap between the two sides that yeah. really put Kilkenny in the driving seat. Yeah, and, you know, it was, not, it was nine points to seven. There were two, Kilkenny were two points ahead when Henry Shefflin got the ball here. And, you know, he had been doing nothing before this. But watch, look at the vision he has here. Reed breaks away from his man, leaves that bit of yeah, Paulie Manor doesn't close it down, and this time he hits it into the ground and puts it into the net. Before that, remember, Colin Finley got a chance, didn't need it hard enough. But the, the pass from Shefflin there is absolutely brilliant, and the finish couldn't be better. Down into the ground, give Cummins no chance. Cummins had made two great saves yeah. before that. Down into the ground, ball into the net, and opened up a five a five point lead. Crucial thing there was mm. how Tip responded. Yeah. Was the, that was the really, really vital thing, and pair box was sent goal yeah. was central to that. They responded well in their play. Now there was a certain element to the goal that I suppose was fortuitous. Uh, it must be a nightmare for any goalkeeper to find himself one on one with the forward. In this case, with two forwards. Yeah, and, and it, it, the key, as George said, was the response from Tipperary. They could die to death. They're going five points. Don't say this game was over. And once it breaks inside, look, I think it's probably Brian O'Mara gets the flick it. The key thing here is that Lard doesn't give up the challenge. Now the goalkeeper is the strongest physically strong but the key here Lard does not give up the goal right. there he keeps and going inclined to arrive in the scene quicker than most absolutely but I mean it's a fair shoulder yeah. and the ball breaks and it's put into the back of the net no right. it is a, it look, it's a lucky goal for Tipperary yeah, it it's probably a one that can, can you, you never see, see conceding too often but that gave Tipperary some sport to move on I mean to go point up within that 10 minutes of yeah. that first half period. Great response by Tipperary. You talked about the importance of Kilkenny midfield before the match. They've lost one of those midfielders. 
Well, I've been watching Michael Finley as well while the game is on, and yeah. he's not moving yeah. with the same no. pace at all at all. He's not coming into the forward, he's just holding his face. <laughs> now, look at this ball here. I know there'll be complaints that maybe Pollock Maher went in with one hand into this, but Maher has his eye on the ball, he often pulls with one hand. He comes in, hits him a shoulder, pulls with one hand, and it's just unfortunate that the whole he slides up, yeah. hits him in the finger, probably a broken finger right there. This, this, yeah, if he was dislocated, he'd be back on. Just a, one of those unfortunate accidents, nothing dirty in that whatsoever. But Michael, a big thing today is that Pa Buck is transferring his club hurling to the county hurling. Yes. He's always threatened with that. Yeah. Babs Keaton had him on as his 18 year old. He's been doing this for Torla Sarsfield. He's done real lately and he's been trans transferred there today on the, on the first half performance. OK, the second half of Tipperary against Kilkenny is coming up here on the Sunday game. We'll be back with that after this short break. the Sunday game this evening will have highlights and analysis from all of the weekend's action including yesterday's Camogie semi-finals and ladies football quarter-finals so join Des Cahill at 9.30 on RTE2 Now next Sunday we'll be back at Croke Park for the first of the semi-finals in the football championship it's Cork against Donegal in the senior match, it's Mead against Mayo in the minor and our coverage begins at a quarter past one on RTE2 and that is in HD but at half time in this hurling semi final, Tipperary leading Kilkenny one goal and 10 points to one goal and nine points. In front of an attendance, by the way, of just over 50,000, 50,220. Um, lads, if, if Brendan Cummins ever decides to do a, a DVD on his saves, it'll actually be a box set to begin with straight <laughs> off. Another one to add to the collection today. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the key, I suppose, for Kit. Tipperary not to be conceding too many goals against against Kilkenny and this guy started very very well 8 and 14 that's a great ball inside breaks aside to TJ Reid and he has been fantastic yeah. I mean got he started a great ball inside you'll put your house on Colin Finley to bury this into the back of the net but Brendan Cummins has done what he's done so many times in the past gets his body across and then inside you get the ball breaking inside the key was that they get it back out again and they get a free so I mean fantastic stop and look you can see the reaction from the defenders around them they know themselves you see, he's made a great you're stop right, there you're, the right, the you know? you're right and the defending afterwards look at the defending after the save absolutely brilliant Maher in Corden there all surround the man until eventually I think it's Mickey Cat gets the ball and breaks forward you know he's not alone to save yes. but the work of all the other defenders yeah. as well yeah. the follow yes. that was crucial the ball didn't go in after a great save like, yeah. like that and the, all the defenders in swarmed in Mickey Cahill got it broke forward got a free out that was a massive psychological boost to, to Tipperary 71st championship game by the way Bernard Cummins is playing for Tipperary today that's some unreal and he's, and he's won the, the, the Coolie Mountains the Puck Father as well like he, he's a brilliant goalkeeper like you know mm. if, if you, if you com compare that to, to Harrison and Dotherin who made that mistake mm. that could be a vital mistake by the end of the match mm. but Cummins has done this so often and like as the boys said there like it, it draws the whole like Tip had more and they seem to have a bigger crowd than Kilkenny here it draws the whole stadium it was as good as the score but like I, Kilkenny I hope still we're not putting the commentators cursing him by yeah. the way <laughs> <at half time. laughs> Kilkenny, <laughs> Kilkenny are still very dangerous if they can last the pace that yeah. pace is very mm. very fast the fittest team I, I, is I, going I, to I win here now it's very warm out there the fittest team will win as well, I mean, we, we must give a mention to Brian O'Mara, right? Every focus has been on Lark Corbett, has yeah. been on Henry Sheffield, and I think Brian O'Mara has been immense for Tipperary in that first. I mean, you can see Lar, he wants to follow Tommy Welch all over the field, and Jackie Turrell is going with him as well, and they're beginning to forget about Brian. Brian O'Mara has won a mount of ball over on the right hand side as well, and he's actually distributed hand passes out, and a lot of the scores are coming from that side. You're right, Mark, it? because it's yeah. the unsung heroes that are doing it today, like TJ Reid and Aidan Fogarty, the start of that game there. You know, Richie Power, Owen Larkin would want to step up to the plate now. You they mentioned Henry, Henry Sheffield to me during the first time. Yeah, half. yeah, mm. apart from the one pass, that was the only time we saw that Henry. Hand pass you know, was 30 yards that, yeah, really but the hand pass was great, but apart from that, he's, you know, he's, not, he's, he's not getting on the ball. So. I think a feature of the first I, half has been, has been the high field on mm. both sides. It's unbelievable oh, it's the high field. They're very brave just under the ball, fearless on the ball, get up, catch it and drive in it. There is a little bit of a drizzle actually starting here at Croke Park, so that would have a small Yeah, the field second half, second I don't half. know about the, they're saying about the breezers, it's hard to judge it off from where we are here, but it's, it's with Kilkenny in the second half. Now, you mightn't affect the game that much, but you probably find the puck outs, they will go for a bit more distance and put pressure on the tip backs yeah, the it's puck been, outs. It's been very physical as well, Michael, you yeah. wonder how much has taken out of the teams that first 35 yeah. minutes, right? And you're looking at the benches and who's to come off the bench and you'll say, Tip really have the stronger bench mm -hmm. here, you would expect the likes of uh, maybe your Woodlock at some stage to come into place, Shemar, Dunhamar, whatever, Owen Kelly to come in, Canlon, you know, so you would look that Tip maybe have the stronger bench at this stage. 
stage. And, and Kidian, Kidian yeah. Buckley is already on, you see, for yeah. well, you know, Richie yeah. Guy might come on. Watch Prussian scene now, of course. He's a ferocious assault by Kilkenny on the Tipperary goal at after this game. This is what they always mm. do after half time, yeah. especially yeah. when they're, they're right. down. And they'll go for goal now early on. If Tip can resist that, if, mm. if Tip can hold out there and wait till 10, 10 or 15 minutes to go, bring in the like of Shane Buck, maybe Owen Kelly, Seamus Canlon, who can run mm. into defence, then this game is theirs for the winning, really. You know, they're yeah. in the ascendancy right now after they scoring are. their one three to no score in the last 10 minutes. It's their, it's their game, but there's going to be a massive assault on that temporary goal now by Kilkenny. If they're capable of doing it, that's the question. This is a question because people were saying before this match, Sir Farrell, that this game was hard to call. And it hasn't changed too much. It still is. And I, I would think, I would think the they're, they're, two good hurl, they're two good hurling teams. But I would think the fittest team this time is going to win. Because it, it has, there's a trouble lot of hard physicality knocks going in. It's, someone is going to be worn down into it. You know, and whoever gets the lucky break will probably win it. You know? But I still have a feeling that Kilkenny could edge it. Even though they're not, Tipper going in very, very, Tipper the happier team at halftime. There's no doubt about that. On a slightly sidebar uh, issue, Tomás is slightly worried. Where was the rule book on goal we were playing Kilkenny a couple of weeks ago? Uh, absolutely, you weren't saying that two weeks ago. No, but, no well, uh, the dangle I'm coming from is this. Like, you see that there on television. I'm talking about the people at home. Like, this hits going in. I like it. And the referee could do nothing probably about it. But you have to, like, you can't have lads swinging holes in one another, hitting lads off the ball. There's a rule there supposed to be, if you, if you run in the second man into the fights there, the third man in, you're supposed to be at least booked. Should the name of God Almighty, I'm not saying it was easy for him. I, I, so he did the right thing. But, like, someone is going to have to call it sometime. Because if that happened in a first round, in a first round Linster Championship or a Munster Championship, you'd have lads let, gone off left, right, and centre. And because it's semi final, it shouldn't be any different. But it's hard. The tension is there and it's, it's gone over now, so we have a good second half. I said the tension yeah. will be gone out of this match around five o'clock. Well, yeah, yes. <laughs> that <laughs> tension is gone. <laughs> <laughs> all right, lads, thanks for all of that. Uh, teams, back out as you can see. Back to the commentary box then to rejoin Marty Morrissey and Michael Dyken.